In this small video, practical video, I would like to show you how you can do reciprocal averaging by hand as a mean of sorting larger data sets in respect to um, yeah, a seriation so that you get um, a similarity um, gradient without using a correspondence analysis. And we will do that by hand so that you understand what the background is really practical you will always probably use a tool that is um, taking most of the hand procedure out of your way but it's still good to have an idea how it works in the back end and if you don't have an access to uh, such a program you can still do that using uh, spreadsheet software like LibreOffice Calc um, yeah that's that will be the content here so for that purpose, I have prepared a small example uh, data set here. And it's rather um, yeah, small and uh, you can s have a good overview about the data. With larger data sets, it might be more difficult um, for sorting them by hand in general, but also using a spreadsheet software because you have to do more things um, in respect to the individual task here. Nevertheless, it will still work. Okay, first we have now this example data set. You can download that from the presentation. And we have several burials here. Currently they are ordered just from burial one to burial six, and we have different types here. And now we want to have this diagonal here so that um, the objects that are more similar in the main respect are on top um, um, so the, the burials uh, and also the types and the whole procedure is called reciprocal averaging which means reciprocal uh, we do that several times it's an iterative process um, because when we change something in respect to the artifacts the order for the graves will change and this other way around, if we change something in the order of the graves, the order of the artifacts will change. And the averaging part means we average about the um, objects that are in the individual burials and we average about the uh, burials for the individual types here. So this is just um, to give you some indication why we are individual steps here. It's a method that is based on the ranking of the individual things and what is inside of the graves and we will produce an initial ranking and then we will change this ranking according to the data set. For that we need at first two informations. One is the ranking and as I said we start with initial ranking just like the data comes so we give the individual burials a rank according to their um, to their uh, order in which they are currently are. So burial one gets rank one, burial two gets rank two, and you can highlight those and drag the area here so that you get the rank from one to six for our burials one to six. And now we do the same for the objects. So Fibula gets currently a rank of two, Sword gets a rank of uh, Fibula gets a rank of 1, Sword gets a rank of 2, and so on for all the different objects here. And we will then sort, we will change the, um, the ranking according to a value that we calculate from the content of the burials. For the second part, all right, let's, let's just go with that. So um, now we calculate the value for burial 1 in respect of the ranking of the individual artifacts that are in there. And that goes like that. We make here a new column. Or we use a new column here for burial one and there we say uh, this column should consist of the number of fibula that we have in this burial times the rank of the fibula which is currently one plus the number of sorts that we have times the rank of the sorts plus the number of pots that we have times the rank of the pots plus 
oops, plus the number of uh, br uh, arm rings that we have times the rank of the arm rings plus the number of finger rings that we have times the rank of the finger rings. With that we get this value of 9 because we have no s fibula, no sword, no pot, but we have a arm ring and a finger ring. Arm ring has the value, the rank of 4, finger ring has uh, the rank of 5 and so we get a 9 here as the final rank. And we have want to repeat that for all the burials. So instead of just typing, we can copy paste this formula here, but you will see that we get zeros here. And the reason for that is uh, if we copy paste the formula, um, the spreadsheet software also changes the individual position. So here we multiply by um, the content, the number of fibulas that we have by the value of B8. And if I move down, now you can see that's uh, B9 when we just copy paste that. The reason is that the spreadsheet software now uh, is also moving the target cell here to the next cell and there is nothing in there. To prevent that, we can use the dollar sign in front of the uh, number that we want to keep fixed with copying. And that's in that case the row 8 because all our values, our ranks here are in row 8. And to fix that for the copying process, we just add a dollar before the 8. And that's true for all the individual uh, places where we want to keep that fixed. And now the result doesn't change here. But if I now copy paste that in the other cells, you can see that we now have here the uh, total ranks calculated for all the different rows. So that's the rank part. Now we have a ranked value here. And we immediately can see that burial 5, for example, has a lower rank than burial 1. And the same is true for burial 2. But this is now strongly dependent on how many objects we have in the individual burials. And we want to have an average value for the rank for the individual burials. So here comes the averaging part from the reciprocal averaging. And to get an average, we have to divide the rank that we just calculated by the number of objects that are actually in the burial. And to get that quite fast, probably you have seen already the other video about uh, correspondence analyzers, um, probably not. There is a um, formula in the spreadsheet software that says count if, and we want to count how many of these values are above zero. So with that, we get information how many objects are actually represented in the burial. So here we should get a value, get a value of two because we have two uh, objects in the burial. To calculate that, we use this count if formula or function equals to count if. And then we open the bracket and now we highlight for the, the range for which we want to count that. And the second part of this function is the criteria on which it should count. And this should be above zero. So I make some exclam uh, quotation mark and say above zero. And I can close the brackets here also. And here you can see now the value of two. So it counts. This is not counted, this is not counted, this is not counted, but here it's above zero, so this is counted and this is counted. We have two times above zero, and now we have the value here. And we can just copy, paste that for all the other cells here. And now we get the number of objects in the burial. For most of them, we have only two, but here for the graph six, for example, we have three objects. So that's why here now we have the three. And to get the average rank, we have just to divide our calculated rank by the number of objects that are present. And to do that, I just say equation uh, sign the rank divided by the number of objects. And now I can copy paste that to all the other cells here. And now we get a 
um, slightly changed order um, but this affects only burial uh, six here because there we have more um, objects than in all the other graves so here we have three so it's divided by three and this changes the value here okay now we can start um, sorting this in respect of uh, the rank here and change um, the position so with that grave 5 has the lowest rank then it comes grave 2 then 3 and 4 then 6 and then grave 1 here okay to do that I just copy paste the whole rows here I make a new or uh, let's go like that I put an empty row above our ranks here and I move my burial one to the bottom oh no let's let's go the other way sorry for confusion um, I add some rows above here multiples and then I put grave 5 copy paste in position 1 then we have grave 2 copy paste and then um, let's copy paste that one above and burial one copy paste to the bottom and now I can remove these rows here and now we have the order in respect of the ranks here represented and you can see that it starts getting closer to this diagonal that we would like to achieve here but now comes the second part now we have to do the same for the individual artifacts to do so we kind of need the same information here like we had before before we have now a new order here of our uh, burials and we have to reflect that in this rank column here so now this is one two three four five and six so this is the new order of our burials and now we repeat the same for the um, horizontal part so also we need to calculate the ranks the combined ranks here so I say for this object for this artifact type the rank is the position in grave 5 times the rank of grave 5 plus the position of grave 2 I in grave 2 times the rank of grave 2 plus the position in grave 3 times the rank of grave 3 plus the same for oh, wait a second no made a mistake here let's do that again sorry so one times the rank of grave one plus two times the rank of grave two plus three times the rank of grave three plus four times the rank of grave four plus six times the rank of grave six plus one times the rank of grave one and now here we ordered reordered horizontal and that's why we had this uh, dollar for the row because we won't always want to refer to this row here we have the same vertical so we always want to combine with uh, com compare with um, this column G and to keep that fixed if we copy paste that over here we have to put the dollar sign before the G so whenever also we move uh, we copy paste the content of this cell to the other cells uh, that this row will not go over to these rows but that this always is referring to row G here so I put this dollar sign wherever we have a G here so now this is fixed and I can copy paste that for the whole row here and now we have the total rank of the different artifacts 
um, also here. And now we have also, because we want to have the average value, we have to also count in ma how many graves this object is represented at all. So this is the same with count if. And we highlight that semicolon. And this should again be bigger than zero to be counted. And we can copy paste that over here. And now we divide the actual rank by the number of objects that can contribute to that rank to get the average value. So that's the rank divided by the number of objects in there. And I fill in all the other columns here. So now we have again a rank which we can use for reordering the objects. And I can see most of them are actually already in order, but the sort needs to be moved here between the arm ring and the finger ring. No, actually before the arm ring because it's 3.3 something. So I make a new column here, copy paste the sort over here and remove this column. Now we have changed order here and we have to reflect that in our rank um, row here. So now this is one still, but this is two, this is three, four and five. And you have probably seen while I was doing that, these numbers here changed, have changed in the, in the back. So now we have a new order of the burials according to the ranks of the objects because the ranked ranks of the objects have changed. Now we have to do a reordering here. And this is like that, that these two uh, graves now have a smaller rank, total average rank, and that we have to move that in front of grave three here. To make that easy, I just make a new column here. Uh, no, here. And I move the content of this row down here. And I delete this row. And again, the ranks will have slightly changed here. We have now to have an eye on if the um, the values here are still uh, correct, and especially here, so that it says from B to F, like it is here for all the columns. That's okay. And also here from two to seven, that's also okay here. So this can change in the copy paste process. You have just have to have an eye on if this is correct still. Now we can already see that there is um, a diagonal, but we have changed the order here. So we have to again change that. So this is still grave the rank of one, this is still rank of two. Now we have here three, four, five. And again, now the ranks will change for the objects. And we have to have a look if this is still the correct order, it's not. Now this arm, uh, this, uh, arm ring has a higher rank and we have to move that to the back here. Um, I will do it the other way around. I insert a column here and move the finger ring over here and delete this column. And now I have to change the ranks again here for five. And again, I have to look here if the values are still in order and it seems so. And also if these values are still in order and if these values still refers to the total width of the table and also these values still refer to the total width of the table and that's still the case. So with that, if now there is no need to change any ordering here to get the average rank in the right order, we have finished and we have done our seriation. So now you can see that this diagonal is very well represented. Burial 1 is the lowest one. It has the um, values or the objects 
most to the right here. Burial 5 is the first one and also it has only objects that are in the first rows. Then burial 2 comes here and here we have a sp uh, some kind of spread of the values. Uh, it makes an average for this and this is uh, has the same rank like burial 2. Here we get the rank of 1, here we get the rank of uh, 4, in total it makes 5, but the same is true here, we get a rank of 2 and here we get a rank of 3, in total that makes also 5 divided by the number of objects, it's 2.5 uh, for both of these objects. So the order of these burials here is interchangeable, you can um, cannot decide which is uh, should be ordered in which other direction. So um, that's fine here. So with that we have achieved this diagonal and now we have our solution and with that I can remove all this uh, help um, rows and columns. We don't need them any longer and now we have our seriation done by hand using a spreadsheet software without any specific uh, uh, fancy statistical methods at all. You will see this is also can be done in Tosca um, and the result is very similar to what you can achieve with the correspondence analysis only it will take you some time to do that by hand but it's still possible and in this way you understand what is going on and why the result looks like it is uh, looking now.